You know, at that uh, last um, meeting of the year, the council meeting of the year, um, talk a little about what Mr. Cunningham was trying to accomplish and how that went sideways. Because you were in, you were involved in that. I was. He it, presented, everything was okay for a while, and then it wasn't. The council approved the Delta Rhythm, and I call it the Blues Value uh, proposal, eight to zero. Yeah. And even the mayor says it's a great idea. And then before the meeting ended, he he was asking for two million dollars. By Robert Rules and Order. You all actually encouraged him to ask for more, right? Yeah, I told him, you know. Just ask because, for all of it. How because much do you need? he had a plan that we've been looking for. Yeah. We was excited about. It It had the data with it. I mean, he had done homework. Um, it showed the tourism that was coming. I mean, something that we really believed in. And we wanted to give him more. A to zero, we voted. But before the meeting end, I thought, well, if eight people can agree that this was a good initiative, let's go ahead and set the money in phase. So I made, I amended the motion according to Robert Rue's order. I made a motion, I amended the, the resolution to go ahead and give him the $2 million from the 5 a cent sales tax. Meaning take that money and make a line item for him. Yes. Here's Let's, your project money, right? Yes. Yeah. Since we just voted eight to zero. Yeah. You know, and we're um, all for it. Yeah, we all for it. Um, it caused some controversy. Um, it 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 um it made people show their hands, but at the end of the meeting, still again, even with the mayor, they said, okay, we'll do it. But probably three, four days later. I guess after what I always say. And yeah, what is I, it you call it? I call it City Hall 2. <laughs> when City Hall 2 calls. City Hall 2. Says, I want our money back. When 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 the big boys at the bank says, we want our money back. And they start calling. Some of those that were strong to say yes had to come back and say, no, we can't do it that way. And it cost problems um, that we should not have had to face. We should not have to end a year uh, being divided, but we did uh, because when the City Hall 2 called and said they wanted their money back, which is tax dollars, then those that owe them, those that work for them, those that respond to them had to do what they say do, and they did which is not in the best interest of our our city. Well, that, that became a 4-4 vote, which was not enough to Correct. pass. Uh, what would that vote be today? 6-2? I don't know. I have not, uh, truly, I have not watched the uh, uh, council meeting since I left. I read it, what you all put in the paper. Um, Thank you for reading. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, so I would just have to wait to see. Now, I do know that uh, all the woman Frazier said on the record that she can't be bought and she'll do what's in the best interest. Uh, well, you know, uh, Judas said he loved Jesus. <laughs> so you have to wait to see uh, what, what you get. I do yeah. know that... Um, um, she was picked. She wanted to run. She was picked to run. So therefore, um, you have to wait to see if when Sim, when when City Hall two calls, how she responds. I don't know um, all the woman Brunson, um, so I can't speak on on, on on that one. So the Mr. Cunningham's. Um, what he voiced that night, and then he wrote a column for the paper a few weeks later. Um, he's he's just afraid that because this money was left under the umbrella of go forward, I guess, in urban renewals mm -hmm. account, that um, his project just is not going to be the same. 
he, because he thinks that Go Forward detests his project to start with, and that if they're in charge of the purse strings, um, it will not be as he has envisioned it, or they will be reluctant to turn loose of money to further his project. Very smart man. He, 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 you think he, that's the way that'll roll? That's the way it'll roll. And, and even now that the council has voted to do it and they're going to give him the money a different way, he understand, uh, Brother Cunningham understand, that once success happens, the way the mayor and those that voted to set it up that way, once it becomes a reality, go forward, get to say, we funded that program. Even though they didn't want. Even though they didn't want it. Didn't want to. Right? Yes. Yeah. That's what that's that's what that's the, what bothered me about the way it. Mr. Cunningham described it was they didn't want it, but when it was there was overwhelming support for it, suddenly they were okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They feel like all of a sudden they feel like, well, we know what. Let's go ahead and do it, and we'll claim success when it comes to fruition. Yeah. That's how they roll. Um, what kind of a job do you think the mayor's doing? Depends on what scale you want to use. Uh, my personal scale, um, not very good because I believe she had a chance and an opportunity to work with her council, still have that now, but she had a chance to, to work with a council that was not just, you couldn't pull everybody's strings. And she was unable to say, okay, I may not like everything that Alderman Whitfield has put on the table, but he's got a point here. I may not like everything Brown Sr. Uh, I may not like everything that all the women Alexander put on the table, but let's put it together and see how we can come to a, a point of engaging everybody's mindset and thoughts because they all uh, want what's best for the city of Pine Bluff. She's not able to do that because it would take away, it would take her eyes off of go forward. That's the problem. That's why I say, um, to me, it's not, um, she's not doing as well as I once hoped and knew that she could do. Um, and I've always said to her, what I say to you is I, I call it like I see it. She has that capability, but she's not using her own mindset. She, she's, she's carrying out a plan of others, so she, she can never get ahead of it because she got to wait till the orders come in, say this is the next thing we're going to do. Um, there's, um, there's, there's, there's a push, I guess, coming from City Hall, to um, increase or improve the public perception of Fine Bluff through a marketing, some kind of marketing campaign. Hmm. Um, is that is that a is that a good thing to be doing with um, public dollars? And and I'm not I'm, I don't know they they may have a grant from a bank to do this I don't know but um, you know there is that is it real or is it um, you know just a public relations campaign you know on the one side we have a lot of crime on the other you know they're saying well we went a hundred days without a homicide. Um, okay well. Trying to figure out which one of those, are, which there's two or three things you just said about the crime and the hundred days, and then something else. Now let me let me work backwards. The hundred days and the crime was something that they never should have even put on TV. Never should have happened because it's just not good police procedure or a voice from the mayor's office to attempt to brag or say we've gone 90 days without a homicide. 
I knew it when she said that at the NAACP, when I got swore in as president of the NAACP, she, she made that comment. And had I, yeah, yeah. Had, had I read her speech before then, I told her, may I take this out? Because I can almost assure you, when you bring it to the forefront, uh, the law of average in my whole 34 years at the PD, I could tell you, you won't make it another week. Well, I'm, I'm not sure they made it two days. They, they didn't make it two days. I think they had two within one week yeah. after that. Um, so, but that's 90 days without that is, is not bragging right. What you do is you, you say to the command staff, we got 90 in, let's try to get 120, and then we'll tell them. We'll tell the commercial in the, in the community. When you get 120 in, you say, well, let's try to get 150 days in. Then we'll tell the commercial <laughs> in the community. But you never stand at that podium and say, oh, this is what we accomplishment. It, it doesn't work that way. So I, I thought that was a whoever put that in her speech um, didn't, didn't think that all the way yeah, through. It was, I think it was a concerted effort because they were... Um, I got a text about it, and TV was all over it. Oh yeah, they, they, they called a press conference on it. Yeah, and then but see, in the real world, you have to be. Matter of fact, I think I read uh, um, something that you put in after that. But uh, in the real world, when you call the TV and say we've not had a station, we've not had a homicide in ninety days, and then a day later, a true reporter will eat your lunch. They're gonna come back. Well, and not that you. Um, you know, homicides are the the most horrendous mm -hmm. of crimes, um, but they are one of several crimes that are, you know, statistics that are kept. And um, our other statistics are pretty deplorable, too. Oh, yes. We, we have some... Violent crimes, yeah. property crimes. Yeah. They, they all speak for themselves, and, and it's bad. Um, but once again, and I said this, at my last council meeting, I said to the mayor that um, I was her chief for, I think, 11 months. Um, and I told everybody she never um, caused me any problem because I asked her to let me, allow me to be chief. And, and she gratefully did that. And I, I'll give her credit for that. Even when I ran against her for mayor, uh, people wanted me to bash her for that. I, I wouldn't do that. I mean, she did not take everything that I presented to her uh, to heart, but she allowed me to be chief. I made the decision. But I said to her uh, as I left the council that she had been mayor for almost six years. She's had six chiefs. Mm, yeah. And then I said to, to her in this community that uh, she's been uh, uh, mayor and then she's been chiefy mayor. What I mean by that is she's also being, because she's the head administrator of the city, um, being wanting to be chief of the police department. That's, the, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a failure uh, waiting to happen, big time. Six chiefs in how many years? Six? Six years. That's, um, that's not really enough time to implement much, is it? No. I mean, you, you, have that, you have such a turnover. I tell people, whatever you're going through now, you have to remember there's a cycle in police work that you may go six months, a year and have 10, 11 homicides. But there's some things you better put in place if you're going to maintain that or going to try to reduce that because it's going to rise up. If you look at Little Rock last year, 70 or 80 homicides, they broke the record. That doesn't mean this year they're going to, break, they're going to exceed it. There are some things that you put in the forefront uh, that you must do. Um, this administration that you asked me about the mayor, we have, um, there were a great effort in making sure that police officers uh, work closely with our young kids. It, whether it was pay camp and other kind of things, whether it was during the Halloween uh, festivities, um, whether it was at the schools, but now under this administration, I know we are short in officers, but we we have just stopped it. We we're giving it away. 
we, we gave away, we used to have probably three to 5,000 kids during the Halloween event at, at, uh, see, I mean, at, uh, the convention center. Yeah. We no longer have that because it was given to CR. Uh, we used to have a baseball camp and basketball camps, uh, swimming I, camps, swimming yeah. camps. We, we did things. We did a pay camp for our kids in the summer. So they wouldn't look at the police as the bad guy or the bad woman. Uh, but we've not been able, they have not been able to create a way to do it because they're going to say we're short of officers. But you have, uh, when I was chief, we had military people that would come in and help us in our camp. Mm -hmm. We had volunteers. Uh, we had uh, part-time workers. You still can make that camp go on. But it's not, right now, it's not important. But five years from now, these kids that did not get a chance to meet the police officer uh, in a camp atmosphere, when they see that officer at their home, they're thinking, you just here to arrest my mama and my daddy. So five or six years from now, we will be dealing with these kids that have a different attitude than the ones that we have really touched their lives. I was going to ask, I, I guess my question was going to be, can the police stop crime? And I think I know the answer to that. But what maybe the better a better question is, are there things the police can do to limit crime? I mean, we talk back to the, we haven't had a murder in 90 or 100, what was 110 days or something. Right. Um, is, is that the result of good policing? Is that what, what, if let's say there is something to that and we end up with, you know, instead of 20 homicides in 2023, maybe we end up with seven or 10 or something. Uh, a vast reduction. What what does that tell you that the police department is doing, or or does it matter? What we have to realize is that it depends on, and I've always said the homicide. If you if a, if when you when I pick up the paper, if a person is at home, and I read that somebody kicked his or her door in, and they killed this person. That's a different type of homicide than when I read that uh, they had a party going on in this location and um, there was a drive-by. Yes, we got, that's still a homicide. The police department can put things in place that will, um, I won't tell you that's gonna prevent it because uh, a person can walk into a dollar store and shoot somebody. I mean, they can walk into a grocery store. They can put things in place that will um, make one say, I bet not do this. Uh, it's the old, I mean, people call it old fashioned. You have to have in place uh, a direct, like I'm talking to you now. Uh, until this community sat down with Kyle Hunter, prosecuting attorney, and say, look, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're black or white, young or old, when you pull that trigger and take an innocent person's life, we want to make everybody pay for their crime. That means you just can't get back out on a $10,000 bond. You know, we're gonna support the prosecutor attorney when he or she says it's gonna cost you uh, $200,000, $500,000 to get out. People are gonna say, well, the rich people can get out and the poor can't. But literally in, in our city, we have a vast majority of black on black crime. And I said it to the NAACP, until we speak up when one young black man killed another young black man, we're really not going to make a difference. You can't only speak up when the police kill, shoots, or hit a, a, a individual side of the head. So to answer your question, there are things that you can do. 
Some, for, some for of them some will of be long term. Some long term objectives that you can put in place. Uh, I said to the mayor as I got ready to leave that you could see uh, the homicides on the rise. Um, and our community does not embrace every police officer uh, that put on that uniform. So my take on it was, let's hire someone that don't wear the uniform. Let's hire a, a, um, a chaplain, let's hire a preacher, a pastor, whereas if this young man uh, kills another young man, when the police get through investigating it, that individual would go to the mother and say to the mother, we need to talk about this because um, everybody know on the streets, their thing is, if you make my mama cry, which means you killed my mama's boy, somebody in your family is going to die. So we must have somebody that can infiltrate the family. And, and a lot of times the, the police officer can't do it. So yeah. you get someone that's neutral. That sounds a, a little like out of the playbook of the defund the police. I mean, the... Uh, and I know you're not saying that, but it, that no, this is extra. You don't. One you, of those elements was the the police are not the person. That's not the person to answer every call like that. And that's what you're saying. Oh there yeah, there are other people you, you better to. equipped to address certain issues that have been left up to the police. Yes, I mean you have uh, issues. Uh, people don't understand a police officer um, on this call would be a paramedic holding down uh, 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 to stop the blood. On the next call, this young man is talking crazy to his mama. So now he's a social worker. Right, right. On the next call, it's gonna be something different. On the next call, he might be a, need to be a good shot. Yeah, so there has to be somewhere that you can say to an individual, we need someone that has the mindset that the police officer has, but there's another way you can get to it. You can get to the family. Until we able to um, get into the homes, you're not gonna, it's just not gonna happen. I mean, that's what we have with crime. That's what we have even with our schools. The parents send the best child they have. And still, whether they're at school or they're committing crime, we deal with them. Right. So, so the officer has uh, has a tough job to do, and must be equipped to do some of everything in the, in the same day. What one of those multiple rambling questions I had was um, I mentioned marketing, the marketing, marketing. Okay. of Pine Bluff. So you've got the reality of Pine Bluff, and then you've got let's market Pine Bluff in a in a positive way. I say until the mayor and the council uh, do what's required of them, you can market it all day, week, month, or year. It's not going to do us any good. I just think that's that that's that's a waste. That's just my personal opinion. From what I know of of the marketing uh, campaign they, they wants to, to do, um, there are so many other things we must do internal first before we can market it out. What's your marketing? To get people to come? And when they, when they get the paper, they said that the council and the mayor is, is, is vote, I mean, they split vote four to four. What, what we're marketing? To bring people, uh, uh, bring business to our community. And when they come here, we tell them that um, we have not changed uh, our codes uh, for years. And we don't have any money to, to, to help you buy a piece of property or run sewer or water to your, where you want to put up a, a business. What, what are we marketing? Or are we acting like we want to market it while others can make some money on the city of Pine Bluff Banks? There's a difference. You know, people can pretend like this is going to help us. But what are you going to give them when they come? Uh, you're going to tell them that uh, we're going to market our schools and right. it's in a disarray. We're going to market our city. 
And there are still some round down areas that we have not even touched. I don't understand the waste for money of that. You know, one of the one of the things I talked to Joni about was because um, she had said when when she was uh, robbed in front of her house and gunshots were fired, she said she would no one with the police department ever talked to her, <laughs> ever interviewed about that, and she meant she mentioned something along the same lines of you know, or what are we marketing? Um, the fact that when you are held up at gunpoint uh, and shots are fired, we don't investigate that. <laughs> is that, um, you know, is, is that's the reality, I guess. I mean, she's, um, it's, that's her own personal experience. Yeah. As a police, as a former police man and, uh, my, and uh, chief, does, does that bother you that nothing's been done on that case. Oh yes, oh yes. If if um, and is that typical or is that very untypical? Very untyp untypical. Let me tell you. And I said this to uh, the chief at that time. If this was any other city, and a council person, a quorum court member, uh, yes, we we want to investigate every robbery. But one thing you don't want is people to say, did you, know, did you hear they had a council member in Pine Bluff, Arkansas robbed at home? In not, front of her house. Not at Walmart, not at the dollar store, not at the grocery store. She was robbed at home. Held her at gunpoint. At gunpoint. And then they shot Let me tell you something. Them. When I was on the police department, there probably would not have been a change of shift. We would have had Say that again, to, the problem was you would not even change shift. Oh yeah, right. We would have shaken the community, ran every lead until those that did that were brought in. Because now it'll be different if she just said it and there was no video. Okay, if she just said it and didn't say, uh, we didn't have a, a telephone to go back and, and trace, but all the elements was there. And it was like, it was just business as usual, and it never should have happened. Even, even at that, uh, I know people don't want to hear this, but the mayor herself should have said to the police chief, you need to come in and give us an update on this um, and where we are, who all got arrested, and who we're looking for. Didn't happen. Okay, I, I wanted to um, I wanted to go back to the budget that night. I know there was, I, I had said earlier, the budget didn't amount to much of the conversation, but it is an important document. Were you happy with uh, the way the budget process fell out? No, no, I wasn't because for two or three reasons. One reason, which we've already discussed, I didn't like the way that they did the Delta Rhythm and Bayou that Jimmy right. Cunningham represented. I did not like the way they did that. I did not like uh, the budget per se because um, I had called a financial director. There was some uh, position that has some increase in it, and it made it appear that on last year they was already up, and it wasn't. And all that was is that- So they had changed the 2022 budget. Correct, the salary on that individual. Uh, there was one uh, that I brought to their attention in the transit department. Um, I think, that, uh, if I, my recollection recall right, it was like a eight thousand dollars, somewhere between the eight and ten thousand dollars increase for twenty twenty three. For twenty, uh, uh, twenty from from twenty twenty two, and going over to twenty twenty three, it looked flat. It looked flat, like it was already yeah. there. Yeah. So they had just put that in without going through the administrative committee, without doing it the right way. So, so that it 
was deceptive because Very deceptive. you could not see that this person was going from here to, to there. eight or ten thousand dollars. Exactly. And the way they did it, you know, uh, and when you do question that, and I said that's one of the problems with the city, people will say uh, you're fighting the system or you're 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 fighting against the mayor. Well, everybody must come up on the same um, procedure when you do pay raises. So I didn't like that. The other thing was that um, uh, I'm a big believer, and if if our city is going to do anything good and great, our uniform, uh, police and fire has to be top notch. And they created a step in grade for uniform, something that I have been saying probably for the last seven, eight years when I was at the police department that was needed. And I had put together a step in grade that I took uh, actually from uh, North Little Rock. But when they put this one together, you know, and I always say, I want to stay in my position. I mean, I want to stay in my lane. Nobody thought, well, you know what? Let's call Alden Whitfield. He used to be a member of the police department. He worked very closely with the fire department. Let's let him look at this to see how this is going to work. That didn't happen. That didn't happen. Does that surprise you? Very much. That's what I say, uh, that the mayor is not doing what I know she's capable of doing. So we passed a budget. If you've been there 20 years, we blessed you. But, but, but really and truly, you weren't going to leave us anyway. You, you locked in. Now, we've been talking about making sure that we have our young officers and young firefighters that's going to stay with us. The way, with the plan that the mayor presented, um, those officers that has five, six, seven years, they don't have anything coming. You got to stay here now 10 years. So this year, when an officer is hired, they may get a little longevity, $20,000, $30,000 $30 increase. But in order to really get a, a major increase, they got to be here 10 years. That's not a true stepping grade. But nobody thought, how are we going to do this to make sure it's right? Make sure we maintain the workforce that we need. That was a problem I had with it. And then the last thing was, how do we sustain the pay increase that we gave? Did we take all of the casino revenue that coming in and put it on raises? How did we do it? Um, those things was not forthcoming to the council and, and they held the budget up so long. Um, I did not want to leave there without having a, a budget passed. So uh, we, we went through the process, but it, it was not done the right way. It was not done with uh, people that's passionate about uh, maintaining a, a good, healthy workforce. So it didn't take advantage of your oh, no, no, wisdom on no. that. It, it's, it's one of those things that if you disagree with the mayor and those uh, the power to be, their belief is Isolate that person, regardless of their knowledge. Well, I knew that when the mayor endorsed my candidate, my uh, my opponent. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. When when you when you're dealing with the crime rate that we have, and you rather say I want somebody that I can tell what to do instead of somebody that's going to be honest with me, and that's what hurt us. People think because you're honest with a person, you tell them no, that's not pretty. That's ugly. They thinking um, you don't like me. You you got a hidden agenda. I have no. I had no agenda to do, only to do what was best interest for this community. That that echoes what Joni said about you know if, if you question, if you ask the question mm -hmm. or pursue answers, then you are perceived as not a team player anymore. Yeah, you're and, troublemaker. And you are shunned. You're shunned. You're out. Um, as I travel around the community, I could tell. Like I told, I told you about my neighbor. I have a neighbor that we have been neighbors probably 20 years that I've never had a, 
inkling of, of, of issue with. Um, and then all of a sudden, it was like she said to my wife, which just, you know, if anybody I thought knew me was my neighbor, you know, uh, uh, they see me as an alderman, as a chief, but as a as just a plain civilian every day uh, that I would help when the cameras is not on. You know, uh, I'm talking about one of those neighbors that you truly love. Uh, I'm talking about I cut her yard neighbors. And, you know, and to say that I've got an agenda because I disagree with the mayor. And I said to her and I've told other people. Is because the thing she's saying is not really what she wants to say. It's what others. And if you and, and I told them this: if you look at the committees that she put together, if you look at um, any appointment she's made, you can see that these are not her appointment. These are appointments that people are saying, "I think this person ought to be on this committee. Let's put this person back on this committee." And and she says, "Okay, okay." But I do believe one day, I still believe, that she's going to wake up and uh, she's going to see the light. I said to her this, and I know we got to get to two more questions. I said to her this, she's going to wake up one day and she's going to realize what I told her about Dr. Watley and what I told her about Sam Glover over Park and Red, that she's going to realize I told her that because I told her the truth. I want to talk about Parks and Rec. I want to ask, you know, you mentioned uh, casino money. You know, we had a story the other day that said since I since I started, since I've been in existence, which would be late 2019 with the annex, mm -hmm. uh, they have uh, just gambling tax. They've given the city eight million dollars, or the city has has gotten eight million dollars from that operation. Um, that doesn't count sales tax of other operations going mm -hmm. on there. You know, when they get the hotel and whatnot, that will be sales taxes generated. Doesn't include property taxes, just just revenue from gambling. What what would the city do? Where where would the city be right now without that eight million dollars? That is a that's a great question. But because there's no transparency from the head office, uh, you really don't know. But I can say this, um, I think we will be in, in, a, in, a, in a terrible hole, a terrible hole without it. I, matter of fact, I know that. Even without the mayor's office not being transparent with tax dollars, um, we will be in, in a bad fix with, without that $8 million. So we are blessed to have that at our uh, disposal. And I'm hoping that, um, that um, they have not already spent it be young uh, for years to come because it's going to, you know, there are some things that's going to happen. And let me say this, um, as I left the council and the mayor uh, did not approve or veto the, um, um, the bonuses for the employees. Right. Um, and I said to everybody on the record that the mayor wanted, she needed $1.5 million for her project at Southeast which I now, if you look at the paperwork that they gave to us, which go forward has their name on the Southeast project as well, the, the, the housing development there. Um, I'm no longer on the council, but I received the other day message that the mayor has received the final cost to bring that property out of uh, the floodplain. Uh, all the woman at Xander asked for a total cost estimate of what that was going to be. And then the mayor personally told me 1.5. But I heard I heard uh, just last week that the total cost is $4.5 million. That's three extra million dollars. Where that's coming from? Is the council going to buy that? Depends, Literally, I guess? It depends on what City Hall number two say do. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's what it depends on. If they say go... We going. We're going. The city going. All right. So you mentioned um, Parks and Rec, and you have questioned uh, the director, uh, director some some of his uh, actions, things he signed, things he's purchased. 
give me give me your your uh, take on what's going on in that department. It seems um, some of, some of the things that have gone on. Um, I know the city attorney said she was trying to claw back some of that money that was spent. Anyway, what the city attorney also said that the um, that Mr. Glover works directly for the mayor, so any disciplinary things of that nature has to come from the mayor. That's, that goes back to what you asked me earlier about how I think she's doing. That's why I said I, I could not give her a high grade because I'm just one person, but, but she's treating this young man like it's her son instead of a department head. Well, her son is a department head, though, right? Yeah, well, uh, external department head. <laughs> well, well, she got two now then because yeah. she's treating this one, Glover, like this is her her baby, her, her, her baby boy. Even though he signed a half a million dollar contract without the mayor or the council approval, it's okay. He didn't mean it. Even though he paid $20,000 in uh, uh to pay a personal man bill off with tax dollars. That's what she's trying. That's what the attorney's trying to get back. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What's well, she trying to get back? But well, there was, was no, the half million. Was that to? Was that for the golf cart? That golf cart. And and to this day, the golf course is still not open. To this day, still not open. And I say to you, but it, we got the cart ready. It still got the cart. They out there in storage. So we paying storage. I guess they, they probably got enough room to store them. We're paying a monthly fee on something that, that cannot be used. This young man, and, and once again, I say, had he, be, had he been anywhere else but in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, would have been fired and possibly charged. Um, um, uh, he also entered to a, I said it to you last time, that he entered into a uh, contract with Mr. Jenkins uh, and uh, for a downtown party that had nothing to do with the city, and gave him $2,500. So yes, the radio station gonna love the mayor. Gonna love her, because they make money. That's the process. Jenkins makes money, the radio station makes money, as long as, go, long as they keep advertising, come to the park. The city do it, go forward, say it's the same thing. They make money. So all these initiatives, as long as they're reaping some benefit, we're going to support her. But if the mayor ever wake up and stop giving them money, you know what they're going to, first thing they're going to tell her? Mayor, how in the world can you give these big raises and, and not able to sustain it? They let her get by with it now because they're getting their part of the pie. So this young man, Mr. Glover, should not be there today. Nothing against him. Because I had a private conversation with him and told him, look, before all this happened, slow your roll, just do what's right. And I'll try my best to work with you. But when you just say, I'm going to do it my way because mama going to take care of me, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. Okay, give me, uh, give me three <clears throat> bullet points for uh, things I'm left needs to do to improve. You can just snap your fingers and make it happen. Vote down. Vote down. Go forward. Go forward. Whenever it comes up for matter re fact, redo. Matter, matter, matter of fact, that would probably be my number one. <laughs> my number two. Okay. And number three <laughs> is to vote down the um, five years in sales tax going to go forward. Not that um, you can't use it for the city. Before I left, and, and I think you all have a copy of it, I said to the council, as I was leaving the council, these are some of the things I think would be good for the next tax initiative. The first one was to take one-eighth cents of that tax and, and allot it for small business. We talk about how we operate and need our small business owner, but we never have money for them. So take one-eighth of that tax and use it to create and sustain our small business in our community. That was the number one thing I left them. And I, and I, I gave them other uh, things that I think would be interesting. Well, I think you actually brought this up uh, when they dedicated the aquatic center. Mm -hmm. uh, 
um, somewhere along the way you and I talked about this, I think, but it was that um, the the was penny for progress mm-hmm. that it actually had things attached to that. Yes, it had. What well, you had to you had to pass the things separately. I think. Yes, it was like we're going to buy a fire truck. Yep, and that yes. was a vote, and then we're going to do something else. We're going to buy a police car. Was a vote. We're going to do yep. something to the animal control. Was a vote. We're going right, to we're right. going to redo City Hall, uh, the Joe Thomas Police Complex. They voted on that. Uh, the softball park. They voted on that. So every initiative, even money for the street. So if you could gear a go forward, maybe with a different name, mm-hmm. but if you could gear something like that, where these are the these are the five things we're going to do, or the three yes. things, or whatever. Yes. So had they, they, had they said we're going to buy three old buildings in on Main Street and um, the hotel that Filton Walnut, <laughs> people would have said people would not probably they have. would not have they would not have <laughs> went forward. But they were able to disguise it, and um, and I, and and I say this as we draw this to the end. What really hurts me, and and it, and it does it hurts me that one of the Smartest guys, I consider him a smart young man that I've met, Dr. Wiley, since I left, since I came to Pine Bluff. A young black man allowed City Hall 2 to put him in a position to mislead this community as if they're doing the right thing for us. That bothers me. I know, I know he knows better. I just, I know it. And I don't care how much his salary is, he knows what he's put there. And I said the same thing when I said it to Maurice Taggart. He know when he was over Urban Renewal, that mm-hmm. was not good for our community. And sooner or later, you got to come back to this community and say, you know what, I, I was wrong. I know we're, we're trying to wrap this up, but I'm... Um, you know, one of the things uh, Go Forward has pushed a lot of of different things out there, um, but I, I wonder what happens when Go Forward is not around. They re up the tax for another seven years. Do you do you just keep re upping it for for eternity because you always need that money to push those things, or or do we ever, you know, fly under our own? We should motor. We, we should fly. We should be strong enough. We are. If the mayor would step back and say, you know what, I can't do this no longer. We still have an opportunity to progress the way we should. But if go forward is approved again, it's a, I started off by saying we're handicapped. I think we stand a chance of um, being permanently handicapped. Well, I, I wonder, you know, uh, we talked about Joni a little bit, but I wonder, you know, if if, if Go Forward has lost her, mm-hmm. and and she was a she was rah rah behind this thing, you know, what does that say for how popular it is? I believe. Let me tell you, I believe when all the women at Alexander looked at and saw that uh, this program was making the rich richer. Uh, only those in the inner camp, and you can only do things with that money the way that Simmons, that uh, City Hall 2, going to do. <laughs> uh, I think she realized, hey, this, this is not good for the community. And I believe when people start to hear her voice, there was others that were saying, you know what, let's face the fact. They promised us some eatery place down on Main. They ain't come yet. They promised us a kid zone at the mall. It's not here yet. They promised a, a go kart track. It's not here yet. They promised some housing on Main Street. Hadn't developed yet. I mean, they promised great buildings downtown. Have not hit yet. So what accomplishment? So when all the women at Alexander looked at the whole picture. Um, she saw exactly what I've been saying as well all this time, and uh, and, I, and I'll say this: um, um, 
me and her has not always agreed on the council. Um, you know, and, and people thought that was just crazy that we did not agree. We could not see eye to eye on things, but we never lost respect for each other. But one of the greatest days that I can leave this council with, we left with our eyes looking the same direction with the same mindset. And on um, that on that point, definitely. Yeah. So I, I thought that was great. I mean, I it was like a job well done. And hopefully that uh, if the community did not listen to me. And that's why I wanted her to run from there because I, I felt like they would listen to her and they would get behind her and she would be strong enough to say, uh, yes, this is the direction we need to go. And, and she would not have all of her meetings at um, city, uh, you know, number two on Main Street. And if she was gonna meet with people on, uh, uh, from Simmons Bank and their representative, uh, once a week, I just believe she would have met with her council once a week. If we had, they, you know, she'd have said, well, look, if the council member got any concern on uh, on, on Tuesday at 9 o'clock instead of Dr. Wally coming in every Tuesday, you know, some of you council members can come in and talk to me on Tuesday. But that's, that was not afforded. I, I caught, um, as I left here midday, I caught a piece on NPR. I don't know what city it was, but they'd had some murders. Uh, 75 in a year, and they said, you know, one is too many, but the the mayor of this town was talking, and he said, you know, I got with the police chief, and I got with the council members, and I got with community leaders, and I got with neighbors, and it it was like, well, we don't do that. No. It's not, it's what it... But they seem to be having similar problems. Some problem, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what you do. You, you have a... There are certain things that only the chief needs to speak for. You can't have a, a public information officer doing it. There are some things that happen in our community that the mayor and the chief should be there at that podium and addressing it and how we're gonna do it. But there's nothing that has been brought together. And that's one thing I said to the NAACP. I said that uh, that's something we must do. We, we must reach out to uh, our, our, our ministers in our community. We must reach out to the political leaders. We must reach out to our children. And uh, we must be a voice uh, for everybody, you know. And uh, and I, I do expect that to be be forthcoming. And um, you know, I just believe that there's a there's a better day ahead. And um, and I think the best way I can do it, I always tease my pastor, uh, Glenn Bunn. The best way I can tell you is what he preached a couple of weeks ago. And he says there are certain things you got to swim out of. And this city now. Uh, you know, it's bigger than an aquatic center, than a Carl Reed's aquatic center. And the good thing he told us was the good thing about swimming, all that, some of that bad stuff that happened, when you swim, you push it behind you and you, and you, and you, and you but you move, you go forward. The problem with go forward is it's a go forward, but you don't know what direction. A man that's just going forward, going forward where? To what point? This day and time. And if you ask, yeah. Then, then you're not a team player. You're not a team player. You, they, want, they want you to carry out the orders. And I think it is a dog day. We just celebrated Martin Luther King's uh, uh, birthday. I think it was a dog day in our community when we have a black mayor, seven black council members, and we wait to get orders from City Hall 2, which is clearly Simmons Bank, so we can carry out what this man said we ought to have a right to do to decide for ourselves. It's a sad day when when Dr. Wally, who is over um, this whole uh, program, can be used to make it look good because uh, Simmons Bank needed a black man to put over it. If Dr. King was here today, his, his dream would be a nightmare, full with tears because of what the mayor of Washington has put before us, because of what Watley has put before us. And now we have Miss Griffin over urban renewal, which we said he would be, Dr. King would have said, I'm proud that you took a black woman as a secretary and made her the head of urban renewal. But then he would say, wait a minute, are you gonna allow her to speak for herself or does she have to carry out what the board said? And that's it. So really, there's no game. The way I look at it, the way we operate here in Pine Bluff, his death, 
just in vain. That's just my opinion of it. That hurts me. It really bothers me. But there will be, there has to be, some better days ahead.